So welcome to Athenry Heritage Centre, where we're going to bring you on a medieval experience. One of the things you get to do is dress in medieval costume. So we're going to bring you on a little tour of some of our costumes and a little bit of the history behind fashion in the Middle Ages. So as you can see, fashion in the early Middle Ages was not a very big concern for most people. It's all about layering and keeping warm and keeping cool as well at the same time. Lady Helene here, she is dressed in a very early 9th to 10th century medieval style, which incorporates basically her undergarment, which is a chemise or a shift, which is a long plain linen gown. And over that she would have worn a kirtle, which is also again a woolen garment, and a mantle, and of course a kerchief for her head. Now fashion between men and women in the early Middle Ages, and even until the late Middle Ages, right up to the Renaissance period, men were still dressing in quite long clothing as well. It looked like a dress. But of course, for women it was not called a dress. To dress is simply to dress. And his undergarment here is a tunic, which he's wearing over his shirt. And of course, he's wearing a cloak around that as well, to keep him warm. And around his waist, he's carrying a very simple belt, because as you can see, he's a hard-working guy <laughs> out in the fields and so forth. So he doesn't need to carry all his items on his belt, just what he needs for the day. Of course, not everybody wants to dress like an early medieval peasant. We have many, many other costumes here, which afford a little bit more style and bling and bringing us right up into the late Middle Ages. So Jeff is modeling for us a noble lord here in the black and white. And his uh, costume, of course, is very particular. It's very voluminous because now he's looking from the 14th century and he's also got very voluminous sleeves. And these sleeves are actually called hoopaland sleeves, so they can reach almost to the ground. So they are very expensive um, because he's using a lot of fabric in this costume. And he's looking very grand. He would also be wearing his cape with this. And uh, of course, he's chaperon on his head. So here we have Lady Helene in the wine and beige dress with a little bit of bling, because of course around here we like to produce a little bit of bling on your clothing. So she is also wearing her kerchief on her head and her circlet and her cape. Now, eventually peasants, of course, they would be able to afford, if they were working hard and they earned money, they could afford to dress a bit more ostentatiously. And this, of course, would bring problems with the nobility, and they wouldn't want you to be dressing up beyond your means. And it also would mean that the nobility would not be as distinguished if the peasant over here is dressed as they are. Things like the sumptuary laws were introduced eventually, and people like Sir Jeff over here would be fined for dressing beyond his means or dressing beyond his station in life but it didn't stop the peasants. They would pay the fine and be happy to say, I can afford the fine and the clothes. And then we have Lady Erin in the purple. And of course, purple was in a very expensive color. And to dye your clothing with purple, this was usually reserved for very wealthy people, particularly if, if it was the dye which was extracted from the glands of snails to produce this particular shade of purple. But of course, people could have purple clothing also by using lichen to produce a dye of these particular shades. And you could also use a mix of red and blue to create a shade of purple. So it wasn't totally reserved for the nobles. So eventually fashion would even find its way onto the battlefield. And knights in their shining armour found it a little bit dull and boring. And so they liked to dress themselves up with items such as the jupon, the tabard, and also the surcoat. The tabard and the uh, jupon would also carry symbolism or their coat of arms, which made them very colourful on the battlefield. So that's just a brief look at some of our medieval costume range. 
but of course we have costumes for all ages here and make sure if you are passing through that you drop in and have a little bit of fun here because it is a nice day out for all of the family.